Hey everyone, this is Shaman from Rocketship HQ, the mobile user acquisition firm that lets you grow in a capital efficient manner. I'm very excited to welcome Steve Young to the mobile user acquisition show. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Shaman. Thanks for having me here. Sorry, I'm a little bit more casual Sorry. than I usually am. It's all good, Steve. It's all good. I've you know, seen and admired so much of your videos, your podcasts for such a long time. So it's indeed an honor to have you here today. Uh, and we're going to talk about how to pitch an app for featuring to Apple, right? which is something you are very much a pro at. You've helped very many apps get featured by Apple. Let's start with some of the basics. Before, the, before an app developer actually wants to pitch to Apple, how should they prepare? Yeah, I think the best thing, so the difference, Shamath, in we've gotten about 32 as of this recording clients featured by Apple, and that's across the board in terms of like games, non-games, and so forth. But I think the biggest thing is Apple is very editorial, where the difference is, differences between Google and Apple are Google is more algorithm based and Apple is very editorial. So they want to see a beautiful app, right? And so I think if you're a game, here's what I say is, it's easier to get a new game feature than it is an updated game, unless you're one of the big game publishers out there. And so if you're a game, you know, do that soft launch, make sure you're all ready, but pitch Apple before you're about to launch. Now, if you're a non-game, then you want to make sure you pitch them whenever, whenever you have a really big update, because you have many opportunities for that. That's what we've sort of seen. And with the game, there is a pre-order launch feature too. So new and upcoming games that you can potentially get featured. So I always say, put it in pre-order mode, try to get featured during the pre-order mode. And we've got one of our clients get featured in that pre-order section. And that drove about 8,000 downloads before they even launch. And so I think the one thing you should know besides just, you know, when to actually pitch is also making sure that you have the proper designs. Like I am brutally honest Shamoth, with a lot of my clients and say, look, I know you want this, because everybody wants this, but at the same time, like your designs just aren't up to par to what Apple is going to feature. And so get the app icons, right? Get the in-app graphics, right? And then make sure you have stunning screenshots because that's, what's really going to be important. And obviously incorporating a lot of the new Apple features is going to be very important. And one of the key tips that a friend of mine told me is if you have incorporated any of the newest iOS features. So for this instance, iOS 13 with dark mode or anything related to that and have it in your screenshots, right? Make a beautiful screenshots and talk about the newest iOS features that you've incorporated in your app. And that can lead because, you know, Apple is always reviewing apps that can lead to a sudden feature without, you know, you having to actually pitch Apple. Right. So it sounds like because Apple is a very editorial driven process, the aesthetics matter so much uh, in your pitch, in your screenshots, in everything you do, basically. And when you say pitch Apple, what does that pitch process typically look like? Yeah, so what we do are a, f a couple of things, and I'll give you the most effective ones first. So obviously, there's a form called appstore.com slash promote. You should fill out that form. On that form, Apple usually recommends six to eight weeks before you launch. If you're a non-game, then it's six to eight weeks before a big significant launch. And I don't think Apple is too, like, I would say strict on that. But if you're a game, definitely pitch them six to eight weeks before you're about to launch as well. So that's one thing. And the other thing that we do is we also cold email and app store manager. Now this hasn't been, this is still effective. We actually had three Apple features in October of 2019. And one of our clients did a, a very like great email where he was trying to build rapport. And so when you cold email somebody, Shimon, like it is very important to know a little bit something about that person. And so what we do is we do a lot of deep research to try to figure out what commonalities the client the app developer has with this app store manager. So a specific example is in October, a client of ours, we found the person, we did everything. We came up with five different subject lines, but he changed the subject line to 
from one Midwesterner to another. And he talked about where he grew up and how he found out that here's where she grew up. And they made that relation, that instant bond. And she immediately replied and she said, hey, you know, I'm going to forward this on to my team and let them know. And he ended up getting that feature. And so it is the cold email strategy still works. It's just people suck at it. And so the key to this is trying to build some rapport with that before you do that cold pitch. And the last thing I'll mention is we do put presentation together. So just like you would do for a VC or, you know, raising some funds, we put a presentation together that talks about the app, some key features, we make it look really beautiful. And I think that distinguishes a lot of the different pitches because it means that you're taking this really seriously. And that's what we obviously do for each and every single one of our clients. And within that appstore.com slash promote, there are three, there's a spot where you can add three links. One's obviously to a video, one's to your website, and that last is a bitly link to that Apple presentation. Right. That we so this is a fairly elaborate, but also very intentional process that you have to undertake. Right? And uh, I'm curious though, when you say it's cold email, Apple business, you know, business development managers, there are a lot of them out there. Uh, and you know, you said you help, you try and identify commonalities, build rapport. How do you find who the right person is at Apple? Because just, just because there's just so many of them out there. It's a great question. And what we do is essentially there's an easy process, right? You go to you go on LinkedIn, you go app store, and then you filter those searches for people and then people in at that work at Apple. And then the key thing is your home developer country. So most of our app developers, I'll say 50, 50, some are in the U 50% of our are in the U S and 50% are in international. And so if you're international, find somebody in your home country, your developer country. What I found sure moth is actually it's easier to get in front of those international app store managers, because I'm sure the U S app store managers are being bombarded. Now, if you are in the U S you have to know that the international people, they just usually have one app store manager or a few app store managers for the entire categories. But for the U S there's different categories. There's actually like for games, app store managers for games, there's app store managers for different categories. And so essentially you want, there's going to be a lot if you're finding people in the U S there's going to be a lot. And so you want to find somebody for your specific category. And then hopefully you find somebody that you have some common interest. Right. In. So you look on LinkedIn and see, hopefully, Hey, I'm promoting a fitness app. Are there anybody, is there anyone at Apple with sort of fitness related interests? Or maybe they even mention on the profile that, I manage the fitness category. What was the designation at Apple that you typically look for? Yeah, that's it. It's categories, right? So okay. it's categories. And then, you know, hopefully you have some commonalities with that person. Gotcha. And so that, that's the main thing I try to look for is find the right person. And then, you know, sometimes we try to vary it up because obviously we're not trying to pitch to the same person over and over. So right. maybe you look for an app store editor. Maybe you look for an app store writer because with Apple usually is that they'll forward it on to the rest of it. And for the international people, my clients, they always say, you know, I want to be featured in the U.S. I'm like, don't worry. If you reach out to somebody in India or anywhere else, Canada, don't, they're going to forward it on to the rest of the countries, right? right? And so we've gotten people featured in Australia first, in the U.K. And then the cool thing that I try to do is we try to leverage that feature to hopefully a U.S. feature because that's going to be the biggest one. But, you know. Try, start out with your home country first and then try to, like I say, level up to the U.S. maybe. And right, you spoke of a cold outreach email. You said, look, building the rapport is super important. What are some of the other components of that cold outreach email? So keep it super, super short. I try to come up with different subject line. So I have five subject lines and different templates. One of my favorites is, and the easiest one is, I'll give you two of my favorites. One is product A meets product B equals your product, right? So Uber meets weed. I don't know, but like something like that. Right. And then the other one is social proof. And then we use this for one of our bigger clients, but essentially we say, you know, like CBS plus Star Trek launches an app, right? And the, the game publisher had worked with both these companies to put together an amazing app together. And that got a lot of press. And so when you lead with social proof, people are more willing 
to open it. And then the obvious other one that I use an example for is something about that person, right? I actually pitched and called a app store manager in Canada. I said, you met Tony Hawk? And what I did from off was I looked on his Instagram and I just scrolled all the way back because I tried to find you know, like not just so recent. So I kept scrolling, kept scrolling. And I was like, wow, this guy met Tony Hawk. And so that was my subject line. And he opened the email. I was like, Steve, yeah, we did blah, blah, blah. And so it shows like, it just means more to that person when you know that person a little bit more. And he was more receptive. Like he wasn't like, thanks for the cold email. I was like, yeah, I met him. You know, like it's a very more welcoming reply than just like, okay, I'll forward it on. Type of thing. Sure. And to get super tactical about this, do yeah, you typically... Yeah, for the folks that you work with, do you send the email out? Do you recommend the founder sends out? Somebody on the team send out? How, what, what do you typically recommend? Totally the founders. So all 32 apps are features. One is my app, but always the founder does everything. So we prepare everything for the founder and I say, look, you, I want you, Shema, to have that relationship with the app store manager because right. one of our cl other clients, past clients, they've gotten many features even after we've been done working together. Like it's a game publisher. He's gotten tons of apps featured after we've been done working together. And so I think it's always key, even when you're pitching the press, to it just means more when you're hearing it from the founder than just hearing it from some PR or marketing guy. And so keep that, keep that email short have a video, include that presentation in there. Those are the key components and right. have a nice little opening sentence about the person. Indeed, indeed. And you did mention, Steve, that with Google, the process is more algorithmic. What can a developer do to influence that process favorably, if anything at all? Yeah, I don't speak about Google too much, Shamoff, because I try to speak about things that I've actually had success on, not just things I've read, unlike other people. But with Google, what I've heard from others is that you can still pitch in Google Manager, just like the LinkedIn strategy. So the same sequence applies. Look for somebody in Google, do a cold email. What Google generally do is based on some of the metrics, like your retention, your growth, your crashes, they're gonna probably just feature you. They do have a form. I don't have that form handy, but they do have a form and it's very secretive. So I don't actually just show everybody the form, but essentially they do have a form where you can fill it out and try to get that featured. We just haven't been very successful trying to get a Google Play feature because most of our clients want the Apple feature, but it's not that we haven't tried. And we just, we have tried for our clients. We just haven't been successful on the Google side of things. But that's just what I've heard from a lot of people who have been featured when we change, exchange different tips and stuff. They said, look, it's very much algorithm based. And then you can cold email. Like one of the clients I've talked to, he, said he cold emailed Google Planager and it worked for him. So, you know, those same, same strategies yeah. still work. So it sounds like it's still a harder challenge to get in front of Google than it is for Apple, right? Yeah. For me, it is. I don't know for others, but definitely for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I worked with a very big publisher in the past, and we had a direct line of contact into Google, right? And Google, both Google and Apple, and certainly that comes just because you're spending that kind of money on your apps, you just get direct line, you know, direct contact. Understandably, that's not possible for everyone. Uh, Were you able to get that feature too? Yeah. We, we did get a feature. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. There's somebody, there's somebody at Google whose job is to talk to us. So, yeah, you know, in some ways it's not that difficult for, if you're a very big publisher. Yeah. Also, I'm curious though, let's assume, you know, a developer pitches Apple, gets featured. How can they capitalize on it and make the most of this featuring? I just posted a video today about this kind of comparing to my, to my, my favorite campaign, Growth Hack versus the Apple feature. It hasn't been as huge from an Apple feature perspective. And so I think the best way to capitalize it is obviously add it to your screenshots, like having social proof in your screenshots. I have stats that say, look, they do improve it. We've doubled downloads for some of my clients just by adding that screenshot. So the fact that you've been featured means something to people who are just browsing the app store and they're going to lead to an increase in conversion. So definitely add it to your screenshots. If you're thinking about press, you know, I do think that it becomes a valuable piece of, 
of social proof that you can utilize. And so when you're reaching out to those reporters, say, hey, I've been featured by Apple, we're featured by Apple and things like that. And so to capitalize on that, and then any type of big marketing pushes that you have, because your visibility is going to be huge. And so if you've got a marketing spend, if you're working with Rocket Ship and you've got a paid marketing budget that you're going to go crazy on, that's when you start really fueling the fire with that because you've got, you're leveraging everything, right? You're trying to make a, a, a bigger domino effect and a bigger wave because you've got this free press and free downloads through yeah. Apple. So it's not the, that the featuring is an end in itself. There's so much more you can get out of it just by leveraging it for your paid marketing, for your PR. And I think that's not something that's not very obvious to a lot of people. Uh, but you're right that you, you know it can go more a longer way than just Apple feature in and of itself. Are there any other things that you would recommend that developers looking to pitch Apple be thinking about or have on their minds? Yeah. So Shmoff, there's one last tip that I'll give you, and that is to attend. WWDC or the Google Developer Conference. And what I try to do, and I'll speak to more on the WWDC side, which is the Apple Conference, is I try to meet with all the App Store managers. So there are workshops that you can sign up for through the app on the day of, and you just try to meet with every single app store manager that you can. And guess what I'm doing? I'm actually showing off the apps. And so I did this personally myself in 2016, I had a client of mine do it in 2017 and then another one in 2018 and guess what Shema, they all got a feature. And so the two clients of mine, they actually had game of the day and app of the day. And one of my clients, she got like a photo shoot and everything It was freaking amazing. But that's what you try to do because what you're trying to do is then meet with them. They're not going to give you their email, but I say, I always tell every client, I say, look, find their names. Just make sure you remember their names. And what we're going to do is say, Hey, Shamoff, it was great meeting you at WWDC. Thanks for all your feedback. Here's what we've done. We've incorporated your feedback and now we're ready to launch. And guess what? Because you came to the event, because now there's a face to the app, there's a name to the app. You're more likely to get that app store feature as well. So definitely attend those events. They're pretty expensive, but they are worth it. Worth it. If you feel like you've developed a really good app. It looks great. And then two, it's worth that investment to really show it off and put it in front of somebody because once they give you feedback, they feel like they own a piece of the app too. Like, Oh my goodness, this person really listened to me. And now they're more likely to give you that feature because you incorporate. Some Absolutely other Steve. And that's again, one of those things that isn't very obvious to very many people that makes absolute sense. Especially since getting a feature has such huge, huge, huge upside for any developer that can make it. Uh, there's tons of installs, and like you said, there's tons of press and credibility that comes with it. And you, of course, are the man who helped so many people get featured. Uh, uh, but Steve, it's been an honor having you. Thank you so much for being on the Mobile User Acquisition Show. Thanks, Shamoff. It's been amazing. Thank you for always keeping in touch. And I wish you continued success, my friend. Absolutely, sir. Take it easy. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog. Thank you.